full frame. Full frame? Just because almost every single camera company is releasing full frame mirrorless cameras doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And you know what Fuji says? Real cameras shoot an APS-C. The Fuji X-T3 after one week and several videos of use. Is it still worth getting? Let's find out. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Whew. It has been a whirlwind of a week with camera news, camera tests, making videos, and trying my best not to break my brand new GoPro in half. Or maybe I was actually trying to crack it in half because that would make a really good test. Video idea. <laughs> But either way, I've been using the brand new Fuji X-T3 for several videos, B-roll, and all around good time, so let's talk about what I think after putting it through its online content creation paces. Whoo! And again, I'd like to thank my friends over at B&H Photo for sending me this camera. We've got one more video in us in the shoot after this where we compare it to its nearest competition. Hint, it starts with Sony and ends in 6500. <laughs> and then it goes right back to the Mega Store. If you'd like to get your very own Fuji X-T3, and if you were looking for a powerful hybrid video camera, it's really darn worth it, there will be links in the description below. Another quick disclaimer since we're talking about the X-T3. I'm not a photographer, nor am I a professional videographer. I make YouTube videos, and I make videos for other online content creators. So if you end up wanting to comment, but he's only covering the specs that a vlogger or YouTuber would care about, well then I was successful. <laughs> Lots of words to get out of the way, but let's get into the X-T3. I've been using this guy for a little over two weeks now, and I've made several of my videos with it. So let's talk about the things that I really like and the things that I don't really like and sadly there is a deal breaker amongst this list that doesn't have anything to do with autofocus or articulating screens or IBIS or anything like that. Shocking I know a YouTuber not talking about an articulating screen. And let's just get to the things I don't like first and I'll even do the potential deal breaker up front. I don't even really know how to describe this issue, but thanks to Jim over at Help at Home for pointing this out to me. For some reason, when editing the footage out of the X-T3, sometimes when you cut the footage, the exposure goes all weird. Now this happens to me while I'm using Final Cut Pro X. This happens in both H.264 and H.265 encoding. It happens in all frame rates and all resolutions. It's just really weird. And at first, I thought it was just some of the oddness of my monitor. But if you go back and watch my Canon M100 video, you'll see this happen in the video itself. Between the cuts, it changes exposures. I have absolutely no idea what is causing this. The camera is using the most up-to-date firmware, and since I'm terrified of updating my iMac, it's currently on the last firmware of 10.13.6. I don't get this weird effect to happen at all with either my GH5, A7 III, a6500, the new GoPro, any other camera doesn't do this, it's just the X-T3. And it is such a disappointing problem because almost everything else about this camera is straight up on fire. But with as much as I've heard Fuji updates their cameras, I don't think this would be a problem getting fixed in the future. And heck, there might already be a fix that I don't know about, but it really sucks and makes the footage kind of unusable from time to time. Something else I don't like is the tiny battery. Yes, there is a battery grip that has some pretty serious functionality, but I don't want to have to buy a separate accessory to have actual usable battery life. You know, Sony has really changed what I expect out of a battery life, as that Sony Z battery, I mean, I consider that to be the standard going forward when I'm talking about cameras is something, I will compare everything against the Sony Z battery. It is that good. And while we're on the topic of battery life, according to the specs of the X-T3, this has the ability to be powered through the USB-C connector. But what this really means is you can charge the battery by plugging it in through the USB-C connector. You cannot power the camera while it's in use with the USB-C. I live stream once a week and I like to use my nice cameras as the webcam. So this is also a huge knock against the X-T3 as I could not make it through one whole stream with one of these measly little batteries. So bleh. <laughs> there are of course other complaints about the X-T3, no IBIS, no flip screen, etc. I'm not really as interested in those because I've already complained about them and I'm sure the rest of the internet is already complaining about them as well. So those are not as interesting to me, but those two, those two negatives are really, really big deals for me personally. But let's talk about the things that I really like because there are a whole bunch about this camera. I actually, I'm quite taken with it, um, being honest. 
And I don't exactly know where to start because I like so much about the X-T3. But let's talk about the autofocus first. As someone that spends all of their time in front of the camera and as a self-proclaimed scrub that doesn't like pulling focus or needing to fiddle with the cameras or having somebody to rack focus for me, good autofocus is hugely important. And the X-T3 has the ability to do eye autofocus in video mode and it works really, 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 is that enough really? Well, it's phase detection system just works and I've got no complaints about it. I've actually never heard about Fuji having a solid autofocus system. I always just considered them to have roughly on par with Panasonic in their contrast based system, which is terrible for autofocus, but the autofocus in the X-T3 is legitimately awesome. And I just never have to worry about my focus being correct, which just, it's so important. Something else I really like is the Eterna picture profile. Now I know a lot of YouTubers talk about this profile, like it is the best thing since sliced bread. And yeah, it's actually pretty darn good. I mention this a lot, but I have a very quick online turnaround. I crank out three of these videos a week. So getting a good image straight out of the camera is hugely, hugely important to me. I don't have time for color grading. And what's nice about the Eterna profile is it looks pretty darn nice without any work. Something you can do if you want to make it look a little better is I'll drop the shadows and I'll bring up the highlights a little bit to give it a little more pop. But personally, I don't even think you need to do much to it. If you want to see a video fully shot in Eterna, check out my GoPro Hero 7 Black initial impressions video where I say gimbals are dead. That's the video that was totally shot on the X-T3. So you can just kind of see, this is the image straight out of the X-T3. The audio is coming out of the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This camera has so many settings that I'm just not used to. Like I use a GH5 and I thought the GH5 had a lot of settings to dig through and like, okay, I want this frame rate and I want this and I want that and I want that. The Fuji X-T3 has like up that to a billion percent. But this is the kit lens and this lens is pretty darn good. Like I'm shocked at how good it is. And I really kind of like this eternal profile. I'm kind of staring at the monitor right now. Which, you know, brings me back to, there is no flip screen on this. One thing that's not really limited to the X-T3, but apparently is just something awesome about all of the Fuji cameras, is the physical dials on the body. This not only has an exposure compensation dial, but also has physical dials for both ISO and shutter speed. And they feel really good too, I love good buttons. I like that without going into a single setting, I can change all three things or with a quick glance at the top of the camera, I know exactly what it's set to. I really wish more cameras did this. Instead of having to fiddle around with systems or something, you're just like, oh, I'm setting my shutter to 60, ISO to 400, we're done. I just, I love that. So a week later and the accessory port door is still my favorite aspect of this camera. I mean, it's not that big of a deal against something like the A6500 that we're currently filming on now, where it also has a door that easily slides out of the way. But like we mentioned with the A7 III, those ports are a hot dumpster juice uh, of a mess, and I hate using them. I mean, it is my least favorite thing about the A7 III. Really, when it comes straight down to it, good image quality and functioning autofocus are really the only two main things that I need in a primary camera. The rest I can work around or use a backup B camera for, or have an accessory that will cover for it. And the Fuji X-T3 knocks those two aspects right out of the park. This camera is currently one of the top video cameras out there in my opinion. APS-C is my favorite sensor size, and all of the fantastic frame rate options, data rate options, color space options, ease of use, awesome image quality, make this the best camera out there for the price hands down. And if you are looking for a camera for your YouTube channel or your Facebook, whatever Facebook video does or whatever Instagram video does, you should absolutely consider the X-T3. This might be one of the best cameras of 2018. Thanks for watching.